In this episode, I had a chat with Brad McCoy, a CNCF ambassador and a Kubernetes certified leader in tech. This is a fantastic topic because as the Kubernetes landscape grows, I see more and more people sitting the exams and doing everything they can to stand out in this highly competitive software world. Brad shares his tips on exam days, how to prepare for the exams, and even how to get a discount. And Brad has also kindly shared the links to his talk in the description below and is more than happy chatting about Kubernetes certifications. So don't be afraid to reach out to him through LinkedIn. Here's the chat. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so uh, hello to everybody that's here joining us live right now. It's good to see some uh, familiar names and some new ones as well. And hello to those watching the recording back on YouTube or listening on Spotify. Uh, today is very interesting. It's an interesting chat because we're joined by Brad McCoy, who is a CNCF ambassador and head of cloud engineering at Australian fintech Moolah. As a CNCF ambassador, uh, Brad promotes cloud native projects and tech. He educates the community, contributes to projects, writes blogs, and speaks at conferences and at places like DevOps for everyone. Uh, Brad not only talks a good talk, but he also practices what he preaches. So with several certificates to his name, including the CKAD, CKA, and most recently the KCNA, he's definitely a credible speaker today. So without any further ado, here's Brad. From someone like you, Brad, who's you know a hands-on tech and someone who's a leader in tech and someone that's got certificates to his name what are your sort of general headline thoughts about certifications in kubernetes yeah for me um they're important to me as a hiring manager as well um there's some certificates that i don't really like um i won't name the ones that i don't like but some cloud providers they're more like you know people don't actually know the cloud they'll just uh, study exam dumps for two days straight and they'll pass the test but they actually know nothing about the cloud mm. and you know they're sort of deemed as um, so so the CNCF ones are really good because they're they're practical ones and they actually test that you you actually understand what you're doing as well so um, and you know from they're good from a beginner perspective as well so if you're you know, as you know, DevOps, cloud, cloud native is, it, it, it's a very, very hot market at the moment. So, yeah, if you are wanting to get into that, you know, into those fields, then it, it's, it, it's like your ticket to get into the job. So, if you, ha if you don't have experience, then I would say that certificates are absolute must. If, if you're, if you're a senior engineer, um, you know, technically you don't need them, but in my opinion, the job of a senior engineer is to make other senior engineers. So, you know, the, the, re the reason I don't, I don't need to do certificates myself, but why I like to do them is that I, I you know, lead by example and do them first before anyone else, and then I can upskill the team as well. So if you're a senior engineer and you're looking at maybe leading a team one day as well, it's a good initiative to, to start taking certificates like this. So then you can, you know, they want to see that you can upskill your team and, and be like a, a people multiplier as well. So, um, and, and then the third reason is that a lot of businesses, so this is typical in cloud. So let's say that um, Microsoft Azure, for example, if you have a number of people certified in your organization, then you're going to get cheaper rates because you can start joining the partner program. So there's actually companies out there that they want certification just because they can get into that specific tier of the partner program as well. And then they will save money by doing that. So, so if you, if you were up against one candidate in an interview and you know, you're maybe you having that certificate would just push you over the line and get you that job. So it, it is really about landing the jobs and, and it's a good asset to have. Um, yeah, I mean, some people say they're a waste of money, but, you know, as you know, that industry pays so much as well. So for me, it, it, it's, it's a really good investment into your career. And um, 
you know, if, if you are that good, then you could probably just go sit it and be done with it in one hour, you know, and you would have the exam as well. So one hour, that, that's yeah, a few, you yeah, must really know what you're a, talking about. <laughs> yeah, but that's like a few different perspectives of, of why. Um, now, generally your employer should pay for it as well. If you're going through an upskilling program, um, you know, I would expect them to be paying for it as well. But there's also, if, you know, money is one of the th reasons why people don't want to do it. In the KubeCon, they generally give, well, from the last probably four KubeCons I've been to, they've had 50% off the certs. So if you attend, so what I normally do, um, I get an early bird KubeCon ticket and that's just $10 instead of $60, $70. And that early bird ticket, once you attend Cube, uh, KubeCon, you'll get a 50% voucher off your certs anyway. So it's a bit of a steal, you know. And recently they had a Cyber Monday, which is 65% off. So my advice, if you are wanting to sit it, just be patient. You know, you don't have to pay full price. The, the specials and discounts will come up. So, um, yeah, keep, keep a, a lookout for those. Um, uh, if I get certified, then what, is the, what are the possible outcomes for me, like opportunities and all? Yeah, so um, have what's a little bit of your experience? Have you worked in sort of cloud before or? No, actually, like I'm uh, absolute beginner. Like I have built some project okay. using Docker and all. Mm -hmm. and currently uh, learning Kubernetes. Yeah. So um, for me as well, like the, these certs are quite entry level as well. So I, I feel like, you know, once you get the certs, you've still got such a big journey to go as well. But the, the reason I like doing the certs first is because um, the real world looks quite different as well. So it is good to, you know, to get through that style of, um, of learning and that environment because it's going to be a lot different afterwards and it's better to do that at the start. But I, I guess if you are looking for a career it, it, as a hiring manager, people will, will choose you more if you are certified and you don't have experience because they know, they at least know that, let's say that you had the CKA or CKAD, they, they at least know that you have enough skills to be able to, you know, do, do support in production and so it's really like I said before like a, a ticket into that role so um, and, and not only that is when I first started learning Kubernetes um, you know for a long time I used to just you know jump in and, and just start coding and see what happens I didn't really you know I would always like to just jump in the deep end and and, and try learning things but what I found with this is I could actually learn faster by doing these courses now. That like that, that improved a long time. You know, from from the past, they, the courses weren't so good. It was harder to find good content, and now there's just so much. So um, it will accelerate your study as well to, to to help reach that goal. So that that is a benefit. You know, a couple of benefits as a more junior person coming into it, but because it is very hard. Like if someone's wanting to hire you to see what you actually know, um, at, you know, at interviews. Yeah, it, it, for me, it just validates that person a little bit more. I feel like, um, <clears throat> and thanks Utan for, for that question. I feel like um, if somebody comes with the CKA or, or CKAD or any sort of certificate, it kind of reinforces that they know how to, to work with that tool or that product as it was meant to be worked with rather than like someone that's finding a workaround. It's actually somebody that's being trained, especially if you know, you're being trained by the actual body that wrote that product or tool itself, or that's an ambassador for it or whatever, is that they're actually gonna be using it in the way it was meant to be used. So that would, as a hiring manager, I guess would reinforce that you're hiring someone that can work with the tool as it's meant to be worked with, you know? Because mm. there's so many people out there, as you probably see as well, that they they hear these buzz, buzzwords and then that they'll just put that on your CV. So you know, unfortunately that ruins it for other people as well. So 
oh yeah. mate so you you had no idea how many people i speak to and listen i'm a recruiter right i'm not a software developer mm. but speak to people that have got kubernetes littered all over their cv and then you ask them some, some sort of basic fundamentals about production about cluster size and blah 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 and then it's just like mm. over their head so uh, yeah absolutely yeah. the certificate is something that will make them be able to actually hold a conversation properly and it shows they're passionate mm. about it as well right and they're working for you because they want to work on that product or that tool rather than just I guess moving for the money because Kubernetes market at the moment is on fire so mm. and I guess like one thing I, I just thought of then is that um, a lot of like big companies, they have recruiters that don't necessarily know Kubernetes themselves. So part of their screening process is, you know, let's say you have 500 people apply for a, you know, a big job. Part of their screening process is, okay, do they have experience or do they have certification? If you don't have one of those, they'll just throw your CV out. So I guess it, it gets past that first screening of recruitment as well, because unfortunately, sometimes the recruiters don't they can't see like a needle in a haystack or a gym, they, yeah, they'll just throw your CV out. So having that on there is going to sort of just help those screening processes to get you in front of someone. And then you can actually talk about what you know, you know, so. Yeah. That, that, that's another useful thing as well, especially if you're trying to go for, you know, these days with COVID, um, if you're, let's say in India and you want a job in Australia, you know, that that's quite a great opportunity. So that's just gonna it's gonna help you get that reach that goal if you want to do something you know if you wanted to have like a big expectation of doing that then it will definitely help you that's a good point actually i didn't think about that the certification would obviously really help you stand out when you're going for an international job as well especially if you wanted to move internationally i mean you know the immigration in australia is uh stricter than some other countries so to be able to show you've got credibility in a niche skill you're going to be welcome i guess yeah you know definitely and and that, that alone is um such a great opportunity for people you know to um that there is a big shortage in the world of it so if, if you start studying now that that's your path that's your learning path to, to start if, if you need someone to start then um i would recommend you know i always book the exam you know not, not generally it takes me around three or four months to study for exam because um, I'm, I'm quite a busy person so I, I do it in two hour blocks but what I do is I, I book the exam four months in advance you, you can reschedule this as much as you want but it just gives me a goal to reach so then I, I you know put my head down and study up until that and um, yeah so I, I do recommend once you get your your discount voucher then set a goal and then and then just you know take I generally study in two hour blocks because if you study in one hour block, then you just get on your computer, you set it all up. And by the time, you know, you lose 15 minutes and then each time you just lose a bit of, it's a bit of context switching. So I find that for these ones, two hour blocks are really good. Um, and mm. yeah, and, and then just for the next, you know, three months, just two hours every day and, and you'll be able to get it. Brad, one thing I wanted to um, talk about as well is you showed me your blog post recently when you sat the KCNA. So I just wanted to um, touch upon that and hear, hear you sort of bring that to life. I'll also put a link to that blog uh, on the recording of this as well. But do you want to just talk about that? Yeah, so um, I was one of the first, and this is when I was at KubeCon that got announced and the first 400 people I actually got that exam for free because, you know, th this is why going to KubeCon is important, you know, and getting involved in the community to find out these things. But I was one of the first 400 pe testers to do the beta exam. So that was 120 questions, which is the full, you know, suite of questions. Um, normally the exam is 60 questions long. So I said I was probably one of the first to sit it and then I decided after that to write a blog to help people, you know, go on that journey and, and help them pass it essentially. So just sort of saying the steps that I've been saying now. Brilliant. And the, was, the KCNA, that's the, the latest one. What, what is that? So, so the KCNA is before, it's before the CKAD. So KCNA is the um, Kubernetes Certified Associate. So that, that's the entry level exam. So that's to help people 
coming into you know the CNCF projects and communities and, and really just you know it's quite overwhelming when you first come in. I remember the first KubeCon that I went to, I didn't understand anything and mm-hmm. you know I, I probably only sat at like one talk and, and and each year I went now I understand everything and you know we'll probably talk at one one day but um, I, I guess that exam is to just to help you get familiarized with the ecosystem and what projects there are, why cloud native, you know, the, the governance of the CNCF as well. So even for someone that's been working in Kubernetes as well, there's still a very good use case to sit that exam as well. Because even I learned things doing that exam as well, you know, learning about um, open standards, you know, like just, just a bit of the history of um, and the architecture around why we build it like that. So. It, it it is good for not just beginners as well. Uh, you know, it, it is a still interesting study some of those topics as well for the the entry level one. And is there a certain order? I know you said that was the first one, but is there a certain order you should do the exams in? Any preference? Yeah, I, I would always recommend doing um, the KCNA to start with, mm-hmm. and then the. I mean, you can be a. I mean. The CKAD is easier than the CKA. So traditionally it used to be a lot, the CKA was a lot longer. It was like five hours when it started. Then it went to three. <laughs> and I believe it's two. I did it when it was three hours. And then the CKAD was always a lot shorter. So two or one hour. So I think it's still two. Um, I always recommend doing CKAD first because that's easier. And it, every time you pass your first exam and get in the study mode, it gives you like a bit of a buzz and you know it, it's a good feeling to have and then that sort of makes you hungry to get more certs so always start at the easy one first i mean don't be scared about the word developer in that cert as well the kubernetes certified application developer because a lot of that stuff is still in the administrator as well so it's not like you're going to have to be you know coding go laying or anything like that it's just more based on um you know, a developer using it on a on a low level opposed to an administrator who would be like maintaining it, um, you know, supporting it, etc. So that's a good one for the second one. And then you would do your CKA. That's your administrator one. So that's a little bit harder. And and a lot of the stuff that you studied for CKD is actually in CKA anyway. So mm-hmm. you're already halfway there. So that 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 path is good to follow. And then obviously after that. You have the CKS, which is the security um, specialist. That's the one that I'm doing at the moment. So I'm actually, I, I generally study for these at Christmas time because I have a little bit more time um, up my sleeve and in downtime, I, I can spend a bit more time studying. So I, I generally will sort of stop coding and stuff around this time. And then for December, January, February, I'll sort of just just study instead. Um, the security one is that came out last year didn't it yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's very hard so I, I haven't touched on that yet but um in two months i'll have it but it, it's meant to be the hardest one and generally if you're going for them like it is easier if you go for them straight after each other because it's all the other stuff's fresh on your mind as well mm-hmm. and you know you need to do a bit of a muscle memory with your with your keyboard because it's it's a practical exam and you need to be typing really fast as well so just to really get in that you know you you, it's pretty stressful because you know you have to it's a performance-based test so you've got to do it really fast so if you can you know especially if you're younger and and you don't have you know babies running around crying everywhere and um you know if you're still at your parents house or something you can have the time you know um just drink coffees and study but um, <laughs> yeah it, it's a good time you know as you get older and and your job becomes you know you have more responsibilities it, it does get harder to do those studies so it's good to to get them out of the way you know it, it's a good time and and generally I don't reset you know what once I've gotten you know they expire in probably two or three years but in my opinion if you've got it once you've you've got it like I wouldn't really bother resetting the exam again Oh, you wouldn't? So I wouldn't because, yeah, like I, I think in my opinion, if, if you've got it before, like you, you probably, and you've been working with it, I, I don't really see the point personally, but I, I guess some people like to renew it as well. 
I guess nothing really changes if you sit it again. It just sort of renews itself to say that I'm still good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a driver's license. It's more of a, you know, like I can still drive. I can drive even better than I first did my first driving test, yeah. but it's just a formality, you know, like if I didn't have to go down to the license and pay for another one, I wouldn't because I don't really think I need to, but that that's my opinion. There's probably, and it comes back to what I said before about some businesses will get discounts and stuff if they have a certain amount of people with the Kubernetes um, certs. Mm. And um, some of them, if you want to be a Kubernetes training provider or um, there's another partnership, um, then you must have like three or five, certified engineers in your company as well so 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 that comes back down to that as well but by then your company will renew it anyway so why not like if you're going to get some time off you know if they're paying why not yeah absolutely yeah so you're you're a a head of engineering right so how many people in your team or what's the percentage of your team that are certified so on my old job i actually um upskilled everybody in the team so um, I read a, another blog on that as well about upskilling, but um, in my team at the moment, there's three and there's one, one this is a relatively new company, but um, there's one of the engineers will be doing a CK this month and then the other is studying. So I'm, I'm going through the program again of training everybody. Oh, brilliant. So you are a real big believer mm-hmm. in this. That's excellent. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's an easy path if they don't know before. It just gives them a bit of structure and then, I don't have to spend all my day teaching them when they can just do the course. We can come down to Kubernetes. I'll just, did I chuck that on the chat just then? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's go to Kubernetes. And then you can see that I've added a couple of study tips. So the questions that you asked me about speed. So I've got those down here as well. So I, I talk a lot about, you know, um, like I said before about booking the exam, you can reschedule it up to 24 hours in advance. I rescheduled mine about, I don't know, 10 times probably because, you know, you think you're ready and then things come up and you take longer and it's you get one free retake as well. So I would always use the retake as a practice test and then, um, you know, I, I found that that helped me a lot to know what I actually need for the exam. So, does, you know, when you do the first one, does it tell you where, uh, what you got wrong or what could be improved? It doesn't, no. it doesn't, but you, you, you know, like you definitely have a fair idea of what you need to, to do. Hmm. So, um, yeah, like you said uh, in the chat, this helps you a lot. So, let's. Uh, so some other useful tips I have as well is reverse search helped me a lot. So um, if you type control R, you can do reverse searches on things that you've ran before. So if you're under stress in the exam, sometimes you can forget really easy commands. So reverse search helps a lot as well. And then you can sort of change the image or something and, and quickly, you know, generally the questions are quite similar. So that will help you. Um, watch command is quite good as well. So if you're here and you're doing, if you want to validate that one of your deployments has worked, you can say watch, and that will do that command every two seconds. And then see here, you can say uh, c- container creating. Once it's done, then you know that it's working, and then you move on to the next question. So instead of sitting there pressing like up into up into I find the watch commands quite good. Um, This help um, command is really, really great. So you can see here that you can say kubectl um, hyphen h, that pretty much gives you the code that you need to get, you know, for the run command. So I found that the the help is is really good thing to to learn. and then on the other CK, I have a few more. So this is one thing that will pa- make you pass is have your bookmarks. So in the exam, and the, the KCNA, you know, you're not allowed to do this, but the CKAD and CK, you can have bookmarks. So you can see here that I'm, as I do the practice tests, I, I won't refer to the course content. I'll always refer to the official documentation. 
because that's the only one that you're allowed to that's the only one that you're allowed to um, reference in the exam. So you're allowed to make bookmarks. So I, I index every single thing that I need and then I can just come down here and find it like mm. copy and paste, boom, done, next question. So that uh, to me, that's like essential to do if you do want to pass the exam really fast. Um, you know, you can't be expected to remember absolutely everything. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and and have uh, up here I reference like this is what exam day looks like as well. By the way, so you need a camera, a mic, your passport for identification. Um, the the exam people are, are pretty annoying. They they make you have like clear cups. Um, <laughs> you can't. They they make you so make sure your room's clean on the day as well because they'll make you go around with a camera around the whole you know room and make sure you have stuff off the wall and, and it's clean. And really? Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And one person tried to say that I couldn't use my external keyboard. Um, so just be patient with them. Like, uh, you can get pretty angry fast with them because they're just so annoying. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is, um, so this is what the exam portal looks like on the right. And you can see here that, you know, even if you have to borrow a monitor of someone, have your documentation on the left and then, it's so easy, you know, the copy and paste is different. That's in the candidate handbook, but it's generally shift control V C instead of control C or V. Um, that they'll make that clear and tell you before you start. Um, so one one time I did the test, I had quite bad internet and it was just a horrible, stressful experience. So, you know, even if you have to go to your friend's house if you don't have good internet, it, it is quite essential because some of these um I think they're called PCI exam that the portal, they're quite hungry on internet. So um, if you don't have good internet, uh, yeah, I, I would go somewhere that does. Um, so another tip as well that, that we mentioned was kubectl API resources. So when, when you're testing, uh, sorry, when you're, in the command prompt and you want to do things, there's a shorthand for everything. So see here, instead of typing like config maps, you can just type CM. So that's going to save you really valuable time as well. And and if you forget in the exam, you can just type API resources and that will come up and show you what one to use. So it is really good to learn all these little tips that will just help you instead of studying you know 50 things you don't, don't have to do 50 but you can see here that you know if your preparation and being smart to this exam is really key because you you're going to get a better result if you're just prepared and and you're you know smart with these things and you know that you know the fastest way because you're still saving the same you're still solving the same problem but you're just doing it in a smarter way you know yeah, bookmarks are really good. Um, the kubectl cheat sheet is awesome as well. Um, so you can see here, it tells you like every command that you need. So yeah, just what I normally do is, um, you know, for studying, I, I personally like CodeCloud. That's really great interactive. Um, there's a person called Munshap Manabeth. He is a really good tutor and he's really good at explaining things. And then they have the the um, the simulator as well. So I found that simulator was quite helpful. So I would listen to his course and then make sure I actually understood what he was talking about. And then, yeah, like I said before, I wouldn't go back and reference the course, but I'd do the documentation because that's what you have on the day. So you have to, it's like, um, jumping in the deep end and, and, and just getting that index is right of all your bookmarks. And then someone asked before about these tips here. So um, if you don't know it, then, then I would learn it because nano, you know, it, it, you can technically do it in nano, but I wouldn't recommend that. So for those that don't know, and, and I'll send all these links afterwards as well, but um, there's a, there's a great cheat sheet here as well. So, that will help you to I won't I won't that that will help you just to learn them and then 
you know, if you want to do, um, so one thing that I like is in a manifest file, you have maybe 200 lines of code and you need to delete some. You can type DD, like um, 10 DD, and that will delete 10 lines, for example. So like that one there. So you can really use, just don't be afraid to take a step back to go forward. So if you don't know Linux, I would study this for, you know, you don't have to be an expert in Linux, but never be afraid to sort of go back and learn the basics. You know, don't be afraid of that. And, you know, and, and think that you're probably better than you are. You know, it, it, it's always good to learn basics first before you, you know, walk before you can run. So in terms of Vim, I, I recommend this page here. I'll, I'll send that later, but this gives me, yeah, I, this is where I went to learn all my stuff and it really, really helped in the exam. There's a yeah. couple of comments in the um, chat box. Oh, okay. Yeah, even pasting with them can be tricky uh, indentation. So yeah, them can be tricky indentation. I recommend to use imperative commands where you can, because the first time I did the exam, I was like doing YAML and doing it declaratively and I was wasting time. So it, it's good to really, um, leverage like the dry run so that will make the yaml for you and then you can just copy and paste it and change it if you like so um have i tried with tux in the exam no i haven't no oh, tmux sorry no and yeah so these are my vim Th these are like the key ones that i called out so um a lot of people don't even know how to exit it so when you exit you can go um semicolon q question mark and that will escape out of it so, so for those that don't know them that's just a, a a basic text editor on linux um it's it's a very old school one but but it's very very effective and if, if you save the file you can do go here um like i said before instead of you know pressing the delete key hundreds of times you can press dd and that will remove the whole line if you want to remove five lines at a time, you type five or 10, or whatever, and DD, and that will just delete them all. Um, sometimes if you get an error, it'll say you have an error at line 236. So to easily find your way fast, instead of sort of either counting or you, you can use line numbers here as, ah, at the bottom, it says set number, but you can navigate to the error really fast as well, because in the exam you'll get troubleshooting questions where you're like can you can you fix that oh, yeah. and someone said they save with escape zz cool I, I didn't actually know you could do that so yeah awesome um and then you can have like searches as well so if someone if there's a question like um tell me what you know image you have on this you can just type image and then that will quickly navigate you and you can see okay that's an nginx okay i'm gonna that's my answer so um i hope to answer the question on on vim and then also you know basic linux commands as well these are very very simple but you'd be surprised how many people don't know them so generally these are all you really need to know you know just navigating through folders and re really your your manipulating text files or YAML files on the exam. How long do you uh, get for each exam? Approximately two hours to complete for the CKAD. Mm. And then and the reason I put this up is because sometimes it changes, but uh, and, and two hours. So, so it's two hours for each one. It's two hours for all of them actually. Okay. Yeah, the, the, it used to be three, but three was quite painful, you know, to sit <laughs> In an exam, especially if they're not going to let you drink, you know, they let you drink water, but sometimes they try to be annoying. But <laughs> um, yeah, three hours is a long time. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. These are some, I've got a lot of tips on CK as well. So that's obviously different things um, that I have in these presentations. So yeah, you can see that there's lots of JSON paths. Um, so these are all really helpful tips that are not really in courses as well. So it's it's sort of like I, I would recommend going through these slides um, 
and hopefully you can also because they're open source slides hopefully you can do them this talk yourself one day as well after you pass it because i've made it um these are obviously open source as well so feel free to do this talk yourself it'd be pretty cool to see someone do it is this um, the uh, link that you put in a moment ago the presentations yeah i'm just yeah, thinking yeah, for yeah. those that are listening on spotify that aren't seeing what we're seeing yeah we, we might do that separately maybe i think yeah maybe another talk separately for the podcast um and then all of those slides are also on blogs as well so i've categorized them um let me just quickly go to them so you'll see the scenes the kcna one as well and then basic linux commands um and ck tips here and then that was another sort of upskilling one but this is basic linux commands you should know as well so this is a good one to go through and it sort of gives you interactive um you know you can see how it works so you can just follow this blog and that will do all your linux commands and then also for ck and i have all the exam tips that we talked about today in this blog as well so um talked about getting the 50 percent off um, I, I recommend doing, I, I did introduction to Kubernetes as well. So um, I, I think it helped me, uh, what's the link to the blog? Um, I'll, I'll get it soon. Ah, actually, I'll just write it for you here. So I find um, doing the introduction to Kubernetes was good as well because a lot of people try and skip it because they think they know more than they do. Um, oh yeah, someone sent it, thanks. So, yeah, someone, they, they think they're more than they do. So it's worth going to do the introduction first. You don't need to, uh, one recommendation, I, I wouldn't waste too much time on it because that doesn't really count to the certification, but at least understand the core concept first before you move on. And then it will actually make it faster for you to learn as well. So um, yeah, this talks about bookmarks, um, yeah, all, all the all the things in the slide, it's just in one blog as well. Um, that we talked about the how talks about and the questions I number the YAML files as well. So when I go because you can flag one thing I would say is if you're stuck on a question, don't spend too much time on it because you'll find out that you might spend too much time on it and fail it, but you will also miss another one at the end as well. So if you have a, a boss as well, I've done a blog uh, all day DevOps where this is talking about actually upskilling teams. So, so what I'm going through at the moment, and, and this is why I do the certifications as well, because um, then I can go and then upskill the team through them, through communities and, and teach that through the organization as well. So, you know, this, um, yeah, lead by example, get the buy-in. So if you show this to one of your bosses as well, that'll help get your Kubernetes um, exams paid for. Yeah, and then that's, yeah, just, just going over some of the blogs, but um, yeah, so you have references to slides, the blogs. Um, there's also some YouTube videos I've done similar to this talk as well um talking about tips but yeah um does anyone have uh how is cks different from the other exams so cks is really on the security side so it, it's getting let me show you here All right. so it, it's a lot more technical so it goes over uh, we talk a lot about supply chain security there so essentially supply chain is um i've heard another podcast recently on this and for some reason they talk about bars of soap being you know made and produced and sent to the supermarket shelf so that concept is like okay we're getting code from the developers and that's going all the way through the production line in, into production so that supply chain security is um making sure that every single step in your in your pipelines and and processes are secure because uh, if you have a 
a link that's not strong, it, you know, everything's going to break. So it, it really tells you the hardening and, and things to watch out for that are vulnerable and, and just to make it more harder than, than it is by default. So that really talks very heavily on, on the security side. And you you have to do your CK before you do your CKs as well. So that, that's like the ultimate like advanced level to do. Right, I actually uh, wanted to finish on something. Um, going back to what you mentioned earlier on about, you know, if you're, you gave an example, if you're uh, from India and you want to get to Australia and the certifications is one way to, to make yourself stand out. What I would mm. want to ask you is about the Kubernetes market and the Kubernetes talent shortage in general. How do you see that playing out next year? Um, so at the moment, people can pretty much, if you're a Kubernetes in engineer and you're good, you can pretty much um, ask for whatever you want. You know, we're hearing people asking ridiculous prices, and even one of my mates, he's he he came to me. He's like, yeah, um, I don't want to work for you because um, I know that I can get you know fifty thousand dollars more somewhere else. And I sort of laughed at him. And then the next day he got a job like that and he probably could have got many. So yeah. I, I can probably see, um, yeah, j just next year I can just see a, a lot of that continuing on and probably even getting worse. So those really good engineers that have taken the time to study, they're going to reap all the rewards. So they'll get opportunities to work overseas. Um, they'll get they'll get stepped up into, you know, if you are interested to do more senior or leadership roles, they will get stepped up faster than other people as well that don't have those skills. So re really, like, the market's so hot that the world's your oyster in, in that game at the moment. So definitely uh, yeah. take the opportunity to get certified. Yeah. And, and, I mean, money's not all the drivers as well, but it'll open up a lot of other... Um, opportunities as well and you know some some people complain about the price you know and maybe they're busy buying cryptocurrency or something <laughs> else but if you, if you do invest in certification like for example when i started i tell you my salary has gone up five times from when i started and that, and that's from studying and, and getting certified and, and and really putting that hard work in and, and that's paid off more than you know that's a considerable amount you know, if I'm getting that every year on and on. So that that's from just putting in the, the time studying. So it is a really great investment, obviously. You know, I know that it's quite expensive, but you will get that money back. I, I promise you that. I hope it, yeah, I help people and, and please reach out. I'm more than happy to help people if, you know, on their journey, if they do want to, um, some sort of tutoring or something, I'm happy to do that as well. You do that on the side? Yeah, well, um, we have, you know, the, the good thing about this as well that I didn't mention is there's so many great communities like like Bartson, for example. So there's a lot of good communities where people have like Twitter spaces as well. So if there's, <laughs> let, um, sometimes I do search magic, that, that's the CNCF Cloud Native TV program as well. So we actually do live coding and, and people ask us questions. So that's another good one to check out. So I'll send a, a bunch of links as well that will help. But um, yeah, definitely keen to help people if they need it. Yeah, send us over those links and then I can put those into my description mm -hmm. when I post it. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's some really good um, feedback and comments here in the chat. So it looks like everybody has found this quite a useful session, which was the whole plan. I've never done anything like this before where we're talking specifically mm -hmm. about certifications. So uh, really appreciate mm -hmm. you coming on, Brad. I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. We'll sync up and we'll do the um, podcast version of this for those that are yeah. more of a listener rather than a watcher. And yeah, uh, yeah I'll let you get uh, some well-needed rest, no doubt. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. It was a good session. And yeah. thanks for everyone for asking questions as well. It makes, it makes the talk so much better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for your involvement, everyone. Catch you again soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.